All right, so this is going to be a quick look inside this Acer Swift um, SF315-52 series. The exact model is SF315-52-81HD. All right, so we're gonna be using a T6 or Torx 6 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom, okay? So let's just go ahead and remove all these. As you can see, this is missing something here. Um, the hinge was actually broken on this one and I had to take this completely apart. Sorry, I didn't record that. Um, but, uh, yeah, because of the way it broke, both hinges were broken. It was really hard to move the pieces around and I didn't want to throw like recording into the mix to accidentally damage it more. So anyways, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Alright, so let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. The clips on here are very tough to remove, so I actually had to use a thin uh, metal pry tool or spatula to get this apart. Um, but yeah, all right, so let me get all of these out. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. I think I forgot to say that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like working on a lot of things at once in my brain. Okay, so there we go. We got all of those out. Next, we got to pop these out. So let's go ahead and rotate this. I like to start on this on the side. Again, I'm using this really thin tool. You don't have to use this exact tool, but whatever works. And we'll go from the side, or did the back work better? The problem with the back is, I don't know if there used to be something here in the way, so I don't wanna start from there because that will make it so that you guys can't do that. So I'm gonna try and get my fingernail in there. You can use plastic pry tools, whatever works for you. Um, and then I'm gonna slide this tool in while I'm kind of pushing the clips inwards and there you go it's popping out okay and then the back if you can I would recommend also popping this side up but uh that's probably not going to work for a lot of people but since this is missing that back piece I can actually get in here with this tool and use that to help pop it as well I think yeah see you can see there's a clip right there So I don't know, hopefully this will still be useful to some of you guys. These clips are very difficult to remove. Um, it does have a lot of screws on the bottom, so if you do for some reason happen to break the clips, you probably don't need to worry about it too much. All right, we're getting under here. Pop this out. And again, I'm pulling the cover up with my fingernails as I kind of slide this tool along. And be careful not to slide the tool too far in there because you don't want to um, accidentally damage the internal components okay so you can see we got the sides on the back up we're gonna let's go ahead and try the front now okay these clips are again very strong so let me see here you can see yeah these clips are super strong come on there we go oops sorry i'm going out of view you can see even though we got most of it up, these clips are super strong. So, I don't know. If you're using plastic tools, you're probably going to end up with them all broken. But, uh, there we go. Okay, so we got the bottom cover all pried up. Here's what it looks like on the bottom. And this is what the inside looks like. So, I did take out the battery earlier when I worked on this to do the screen. Very important that you disconnect the battery before doing anything. We're going to switch over to a JAS1 screwdriver. There's three screws here holding this in place, so we're gonna remove those three. Um, we can actually also disconnect the battery connector right away, so let me zoom in here. Okay, I'm gonna use my fingernails at the wings and just wiggle it, and there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and finish removing the three screws. And we'll also have to look at the um, model number of this battery. Okay, so there's a third one up here. Okay. Okay, now that we got all three screws out, we can actually lift it up from anywhere and just swing it like this. Make sure the tape isn't stuck down to anything, and then we can slide it out this way. Here's the battery model information, AC17B8K. Okay, if you're wondering this, I accidentally like pulled my nail back and 
start bleeding a little. But anyways, AC17B8K, all right? There you go. So that's the model number of the battery. <clears throat> we'll set that aside now. And if you're working on the screen, you want to slowly, carefully open up the computer again. Be careful because it's missing the corner screws now. I'm going to slowly open this up. And then you want to press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This makes it a lot safer to work on and greatly reduces the risk of damage, especially if you're pulling the LCD LVDS cable connector out. Okay, um, We're not doing that, so we don't really need to worry, but we're going to do it anyways. Okay. All right, so inside I had to peel up these things to get the wireless antennas out. The wireless antennas go underneath here and here. And just like every other model, um, they have the antennas that connect like this. Or, sorry, you can't even see there. And then you would basically pull up on the tail to pop them out. I'm not going to pull it out again because the solder sometimes on these isn't good. And I don't want to keep doing it over and over. All right, you got this cable for the I.O. board here, which is for the USB port, um, the SD card slot, and then um, these activity lights okay and then let me see here what else so you got the motherboard here obviously wireless card there's one screw once you pull it out you can pull it up slightly and pull it back you have the fan connector here okay so the fan connector is right there you can grab it at the wings and you can pull and wiggle and pull it out um, what else keyboard connectors here it has these two plastic tabs that you pull out um, be careful because it only slides out a tiny bit you don't want to pull it too hard and then I've seen a lot of people rip these out and then you can't put the keyboard back um, I believe this is the keyboard um, I mean I believe this is the touchpad or trackpad connector uh, keyboard backlight connector BIOS CMOS RTC real-time clock battery here okay um, this is most likely a M.2 PCIe NVMe but I'm not going to mess with that. There's one screw, pops up slightly, then you can pull it out, and this sleeve should be able to slide off as well. Speakers here, and then the wire runs along from that speaker to this speaker, so both speakers connect there. You have this little cable here, which I'm not sure where that's going. Actually, let me find. I'll take this, the SSD out, so we'll get this screw up. We made sure the computer was off, so we should be okay. All right, so it has this foil thing on it, so you have to be careful. Lift it up slightly, grab that, and pull. And that connector's going there. What is that, fingerprint reader? Oh yeah, there's a fingerprint reader there. Okay, so the SSD is like this, and it's in this foil thing. So, I don't know, it doesn't want to come out. It's like held in with some adhesive. So, I can't confirm whether it's a PCIe NVMe or not, but uh, yeah, it's stuck in there. <laughs> I don't know. It's like wiggling a little bit, but it's it's like stuck there. Oh, is it just this circle? Nope. Okay. I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and put the SSD back in. So it goes like that. And then push that in, and there we go. Okay. So there we go. We'll get this screw back in. Okay, so we got that. Then um, you have the LCD LVDS connector here. It has this adhesive that you can peel up, and then you can go from the wings to pull that back. All right. Um, when I had to work on this, I had to unroute this cabling out here and the wireless antennas out here. Okay. And these two screws, uh, we have to open the computer about 90 degrees, take these two screws out and these two screws out, and then you can separate the two layers. All right, if you're wondering where the RAM is, it's underneath here. So we're gonna peel this up. So we peel up this side. There's actually one hidden screw here, so we'll get that screw out. Okay, now that we got that screw out, we can actually lift this metal box up. You don't need to take these two out. These are for the heat sink, um, but we'll get underneath the metal box. I just use my fingernail. You can use plastic pry tools, whatever works for you. And we're just gonna lift this up, okay? There's little clips on it. I'll show you a close up later. But uh, let's get the adhesive here off the CMOS battery. You can either peel it, you can peel it up from either end, either from the battery itself or from the foamy side, but there you go. Okay. 
then we will pull this up. So that corner, just like that, we'll go over here. Okay, and pop this up. There we go, and there we go. Okay, so be careful because this foil is also attached. I don't want to take it out, but uh, here's what it looks like in there. You can see the CPU cooler heatsink there. And there's two slots for RAM, but they're only using one. So the RAM, just like every model, um, you pull these tabs on the sides to side. I know it's blocked, but I can't really hold it in a weird angle to show it. And this is PC4 2400T. Should be able to use any PC4 2400T RAM. If you want, you can get two 16 gig sticks. This was just an eight gig stick. Then you put it back at an angle and click it down. All right, anyways, we'll now get this back into place. Make sure it lines up with these. I don't know if you can see, there's the little um, clamps on the sides here, all around the edges that the this cover goes on. So that's how you line it up. Okay, we're just gonna line all of that up. The foils kind of kind of make it a pain, I think. Make sure you get this all lined up. Oh, that one's not going far enough. Yeah, I think the foil is making it not go far enough. There we go. Oh, I'll get one side lined up, but then the other side's not. There we go. Okay, so make sure all of that's getting lined up. And then push that in to clip it down. Same thing here. Put this adhesive down, clip that in. Clip all the sides in, and then we'll put the screw back. And that's about it. We just gotta reassemble it and we should be good to go. I'll power it back up, make sure everything is looks okay. All right, let's zoom out here. Okay, we'll just get the battery back in. The battery goes in at an angle like this because these little feet go into the little slots there. Okay. Lower that down, make sure these raised um, portions are like lined up right. Then we'll get these three screws in. That one there, this one here, and the last one here. All right, then we'll get this battery connector back in. Make sure it goes in straight. You don't wanna put it at an angle or you could damage the pins. And then I like to pinch both to pull it in just like that. Okay, now we just need to get the bottom cover back on. Pretty straightforward, just get it lined up. Also, I don't know, there's a big empty spot here, probably for a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. There's a little connector here that doesn't have anything, so I'm assuming that's what it's for, but I don't know. Um, it looks like it would fit one, okay? But uh, yeah, I don't know where you would get that connector, maybe eBay or something. Okay, so just get it back on top, push the edges back in. I'm just using my palms or the whatever you call this part of my hand to push that down. Okay, and that's pretty much it. We'll switch back over to the T6 Torx 6 screwdriver and get all these screws back in and we should be good to go. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Oh, one other thing. There's this little hole here, if I didn't mention, that's uh, like a battery reset um, button. So in some cases, if your computer's not turning on, it's not charging or having some issues, you can try with a small like bent out paper clip or a needle, um, push that, you should feel the button click, hold it for about 15 seconds, and then see if it fixed your computer. All right, and that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay as I get these last few screws in. So that's all there is to it. All right. Oh, we will also power it on because some people want to see that it still turns on for some reason that I don't know why, because it doesn't make theirs turn on, so. <laughs> but yeah, let's get all these screws back in. Okay, the last two. Last one. Up. We'll flip 
this over. Press the power button. And yeah, I did end up um, to fix this. I had to pry this whole frame out, but there's a strong double stick adhesive like around. So it's a little bit risky to do. Here you can see it turns on, so we should be good. Um, and to do that, I had to like peel it like with this. I had to use this metal tool to push the adhesive down while I pulled the frame up. Um, but it's still a little bit risky. So unless you have to, don't mess around with that. All right, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Um, let's drop this spike.